Hello everyone and welcome to our crafting day today. My name is Patty and I'm going to be your demonstrator today to show you how to make a really neat um, gift box pop-up card that you're going to be able to use for any occasion. And I'm going to wing it right here. I don't have one made. I've got all the pieces and parts cut out so I'm going to walk you through it and we're going to make this together. <clears throat> uh, so the products that I'm using are coming from the mini catalog for July through December of 2021. And I'm doing a Christmas card, but you can certainly modify this for anniversary, a wedding, a birthday, a baby shower, any kind of card that you want or an occasion that you want to give for a gift card to put inside. Super cute. All right. So I know a lot of you would like to take a screenshot of this, so I'm going to leave this up here for a second. I will post this also later in the comment section or another post to give you all the measurements in case you miss it. So we're, at first, we're going to need a, a cardstock base measuring four and a quarter by 11, and I have that here. And we're going to score that on the long side at three and a half and eight and a half. And I've already done that scoring um, because this card is going to take a little bit of time. I'm, I've prepped some of the work. So you can see I've scored it at three and a half and eight and a half. Then we're going to need some decorating panels on this. And so what I've chosen is some designer series paper from the Painted Christmas designer series paper. This is last chance. So make sure you grab that by the end of the year. Beautiful designs great for Christmas, but there's also some, some other patterns that you're going to be able to use during uh, the year. And I have chosen also to coordinate this card with Evening Evergreen. So I've chosen the pine cone pieces and that coordinates beautifully with the Evening Evergreen cardstock. So for the outside panels on the left side, you can see that this is a wider panel. We're going to need a cardstock piece that measures four and one eighth by three and three eighths and a DSP measuring four by three and a quarter. And on the right side, <clears throat> we're going to need a piece of cardstock measuring four and one eighth by two and three eighths and a piece of DSP measuring four by two and a quarter. All right, so that's going to be the outside of our card. It's going to go like this. We're going to put it together, together. <laughs> now the inside panels we're going to need for the left side. I'm going to turn this around. We're going to need a piece of DSP, and you can change this up however you like. I'm choosing to keep it all coordinated. So my left side DSP is going to measure four by two and three quarters. I'm going to have a center piece of cardstock that is measuring four by four inches. This is going to house my greeting or note inside of the card. And then my right side DSP is going to measure four by two and a quarter. All right, so we will put these together in just a few minutes. A couple other pieces that I'm using, I'm using the seasonal label dies also as part of that mini catalog. It's a very large die set, uh, has lots of pieces. It coordinates with the Christmas season stamp set and Christmas to remember stamp set. So I'm gonna be using both of these. I'm gonna be using just this little tis the season sentiment for the front. And I've decided to use the pine cones, the larger pine cone and the smaller pine cone for some embellishment on the outside of the card. The pieces of the seasonal dye label that I'm going to be using um, are this, I guess it's a medium size label here. And um, there are a couple other pieces here that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using this to cut out a scent, the sentiment that I've decided on. And then we're going to be using the two pine cone dies that cut out the pine cones after we're finished stamping. Two other pieces that are in this set that you might not know what they're for, but you have these two little bar pieces here. Those are, are to create a ribbon slide. 
So I just used washi tape after I cut out my die and you put it on here and now you have a nice cut out uh, place for ri a ribbon to slide through. Um, so that's what those are for. These act the same way for little um, holes for the inside of the tags that are in that die set. So in case you were wondering what those little odd pieces were. All right, so I've cut out my die cut here um, and I've already cut out my pine cones as well, but I'm gonna show you how I stamp them because it is um, two different stamps and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the other piece that we're going to need is for a piece of DSP of your choosing. And this is what's going to create the gift bag inside. So I have a piece that measures four inches by nine and a half. And we've got a lot of scoring going on. We're going to score this together. And I also have a template to show you once we get to that. Uh, how we cut it, how we cut some of the pieces out and how we fold it and where we place the tear and tape. So I did mock that up ahead of time to make that a little bit easier for me to do that on camera and for you as well. And then how we're going to keep this closed, there's a couple different options that you might see out there from different demonstrators, maybe using magnet. Um, but the one that I uh, decided to use was a belly band. And that you can use DSP for, or you can use a piece of cardstock that measures one and a half by 11 inches. And I forgot to say in the beginning of this video that I um, was inspired by Priscilla Stamps. Uh, her, she's an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so I appreciate her YouTube video. And um, she is the one who gave me the inspiration for this card. So. Thank you, Priscilla, for doing that. All right, so let's get started with making this card. And we'll do this together. So if there's any mistakes going on, you can see me make the mistakes and we'll fix it together. All right, so for the card base, again, I've already cut and scored that card base out. And I've got, we're gonna save this the inside pieces for later but we're going to go ahead and adhere and burnish the score lines. All right, so we scored on the long side at three and a half and eight and a half. So we're just gonna burnish those. And the right side is what we're gonna have, or I'm sorry, the left side here um, is the, the larger panel. Just wanna make sure of that, uh, yes. Um, okay, so we're going to, I like to use Tombow glue when I can. I feel that it is the most sturdiest glue, it lasts the longest, it's easy to use. So we're just going to apply a little bit of Tombow on our DSP, adhere it to our cardstock. And then... Where's my other piece? I just had it here showing you. There it is. You can certainly use stamp, stamp and seal, stamp and plus, um, whatever you're choosing. You can even use tear and tape if you'd like. We are going to use tear and tape on the gift bag because it is, uh, you'll see why we're using some ribbon to attach here. All right, so now we can go ahead and apply these to the outside of our card. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna apply the inside panels just yet until you have made and attached your gift bag. So uh, I know sometimes people get overzealous and they wanna do all the panels at the same time. Just don't do the inside panels just yet. Um, I've gotten caught by that mistake myself. So, um, so make sure you watch the video, this video all the way through before attempting to put this card together and it may save you some heartache. <laughs> um, all right, so that's the front of our card. It can go this way or it can go that way, however you wanna fold it, fold it in. All right, so let's get to the gift bag. All right, so I am going to bring in my Simply Scored, 
four board. Again, my piece measures four inches by nine and a half. And we're gonna score this, leave this right here, kind of in the camera, just so that you can see. We are going to score this on the long side at a half inch, one inch, four and a half, five, five and a half, and nine. And then we're gonna rotate it, and we're gonna score on the short side at one inch, and three and a half inches. Okay, and that's the only thing we need the scoreboard for. All right, and let me bring in this template. Now, it might be a little confusing at first, but we will get through this. So here's my template after I cut all of the pieces to, um, that I don't need out. So we're gonna grab some scissors. And I've marked the score lines on this this model here and that you'll see that when you score it there is a uh, smaller border and then a wider border so we want to make sure that we have we're, we're turning it this way so my widest score line is going to be at the bottom and the narrow one's going to be at the top and we have all of these sections here that we're going to cut out so let's um go ahead and cut well let's burnish first sometimes it's easier to see when we burnish all of those lines so we're just going to gently burnish all of these score lines and some of the score lines are going to be uh, valley folds but we're not going to worry about that right now because it'll be flexible enough to wear um, we'll be able to, to work with it. So just be gentle with your DSP when you've got all the scoring going on. Just make sure that it's even. Okay, so we've got, you can see on this side, it's a little bit easier to see those corner so we're going to take out all of the corners and then the squares in the center section I just want to make sure that I've got this right We've got a long piece here. We're just gonna cut those out. We've got an, a small square up here in the corner that we're going to cut out. Oof, this paper is really hard to see. down and we're gonna just cut that off we're gonna do the same at the the other side and this is an, an the narrow border here Let's double check to make sure that this looks like the model. And I'm pretty sure that it does look the same. 
me get this and then make sure I'm in the camera view here. Uh, so we've cut out the bottom squares, a little bit of a rectangle here, a square here, half of a rectangle, a square. So yes, I've got all of that squared away. Now I'm going to do some uh, mark where I have the tear and tape so it was easy for me to remember. So on the upper part where the skinnier side here, we're going to put that tear and tape down. And this is the outside pattern that I want to show. So just, uh, just so you know that I want the red to be on the outside of my gift box, my gift bag. All right, so then turn it over and we're going to put some tear and tape on the wider sections. So my wider sections are at the top now and this is on the inside of the bag. And we're gonna place that at the top of the DSP. The reason for that is these flaps are going to fold over and hide the the uh, where the handles come in to the bag. Now there's one more tear and tape piece so let's flip this back over. We've got our wide sections at the top and I want this strip over here on the left side which is the skinnier uh, folded piece not the double folded piece on the right. So on the left side and we're going to apply another piece of tear and tape. Okay, when I use tear and tape, I do like to use my bone folder, kind of burnish that down just to make sure that it has uh, adhered well to the DSP. Plus it makes it easier to get off. All right, we're gonna need a hole punch and your hole punch is gonna be determined, the size of your hole punch is determined by what size ribbon um, that you're gonna use for your handles. So, I think I need a smaller one. This is a 1 8 inch, I believe. And I am going to choose to use the Simply Elegant trim. It comes a two pack, silver and gold. I thought these would be nice and light because this is, this card tends to be a little bit bulky on the inside because of the gift bag. So I'm trying to minimize a ribbon, a thick ribbon. And so we're gonna try and see how this gold Simply Elegant trim is. And we need two pieces that are five inches each to give us our handles. I love this trim. I've used, well, you can see I've used so much of this trim um, I believe this is in the annual catalog. It goes with, with another suite. So that should be around for a little bit longer. All right, so my hole punch, this is how we're going to punch those holes. We're gonna fold this together so that we match up, match up the sides. And where the wider piece is, we're just gonna come in from the corner and we're gonna kind of angle this as best we can and punch our holes. And we're making that, I'm going all the way in as far as it can go and angling it a little to the top and hoping that that's even. All right, so when we open it back up, now we've got holes here, 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 and here to feed our ribbon through or our twine. So we're gonna feed it from the outside in. And before I do that, I'm gonna grab some stamp and seal. I want to tack this down. So I'm just gonna put a little bit here right below that hole, just so I have something to stick this down too so it doesn't doesn't keep coming out on me you can use scotch tape if you like but i think this is going to be this is going to work fine so i'm going to feed this other one through and 
and try to get those as even as possible on both sides. And we're gonna stick that down. We're gonna take this tear and tape off now, and that's what's gonna hold this uh, twine in place. And using that Simply Elegant trim, you can hardly feel the bulk underneath. So just be aware and it depends on what kind of ribbon you're using to keep that in place. And you see we have a nice little handle here. All right, so let's take our other side. We're gonna put a little bit of stamp and seal just so I can tack that twine down. a little bit long so we're going to pull that up just a tad all right i'm going to take our tear tape off and fold the bag over okay now to get um I'm gonna fold this in half. You can see that this is my fold for the gift bag that we would normally fold in. We're gonna fold this in half so that we can take this tear and tape off and then just simply fold that edge over and adhere the uh, side of the bag. I think that's the easiest way I found to make sure that it's nice and even. So we're gonna fold it in half and then put this edge you might have to push a little bit. There we go. All right. So then if I push these sides in and give it a little bit burnish from the outside because we've got a couple layers going on here. We want this to lay flat when we close the card, but then it's going to pop open. You can see how that's going to pop open when we adhere this to the bottom of our card. All right. And that's where our gift card is going to fit in. So gift card fits very nicely in, in there. All right. So we're going to bring back our card. Move this out of the way. And... All right, so here we have our card and we haven't applied the inside panels yet. So we are going to lay the bag like this. So the, the bottom flaps with the tear and tape are all out. And we're going to line this up from top to bottom so we get it nice and even in the middle. And you see where this score line is? We want to line it up on that score line, take the top piece of the tear and tape off, and simply get it lined up on that crease. So you're even top to bottom, and we're lined up the edge right along that score line crease. And we're just going to fold the card over and give it a good, good, a good burnish. All right, so now we've got half of it done. Flip it over, and it's already lined up on that score line and in the middle, so we're going to take this tear and tape off, and we can fold it this way. And hopefully this works. Okay, so we've got our card, we open it up. Voila, we have that. Now, you can see in here, I've got a little bit of a gap in there. So the next time I do one of these, we might have to line that up a little bit differently. But when your gift card is in there, I don't think anybody's going to notice. Um, and I think it will be fine. So you might just have to work on that, getting that lined up. But 
honestly, I don't think anybody's going to notice. And I think that it it folds nice and flat, so it's going to be perfect for mailing. doesn't add a little bulk. I don't think you want those two uh, panels at the bottom overlapping because it would create too much bulk. And again, this is the first time I've made this, so I'm on camera doing this <laughs> right along with you. All right, so now we're going to take our panel pieces, and you can see why, because we had a little bit overage on... Um, this side of the score line and this side of the score line. So that's why we waited to do the inside panels and line those up accordingly so we could get a nice even measurement and you would know where to line those up. So we can go ahead and apply the DSP. And that, again, that's why I like the multi-purpose glue because you can wiggle it around a little bit. And I didn't add cardstock on the inside. Again, I wanted to keep the bulk at a minimum because we're adding a gift card in here. I want to be able to mail it. So um, I did not add the additional cardstock layering on the inside to keep it a little bit thinner. These are gonna be great for birthday. I'm gonna definitely make some of these for birthday. Be perfect for a wedding as well. Um, I think that just a lot of people give gift cards or money uh, for a wedding. And I don't like to just give you know a gift card in an envelope. I like to give it in a very creative way. And this allows us to do that. All right, so the center piece, we can do a little bit of stamping. So I'm going to choose the sentiment. Let's see, what should we choose here? Let's choose um, have a holly jolly Christmas. Because the outside of my card, I've chosen to use tis the season. So I'm gonna grab my real red ink. And ink that up. And that should work for that. And let's see, do I want something on the inside? We've got a lot to choose from here. We've got, I think my, I might do a little sprig of green on the inside. So I'm going to grab my Evening Evergreen stamp pad and let's see, I think I want this little pine sprig here. the gift bags on the left side so I think I want to put this over here and I might even just there we go so I stamped it and then I continued stamping it uh, off a little bit got on my block so don't do that when you make your card I should have used a smaller block but you guys get the gist might be able to fix that somehow now we're going to adhere this panel to the center. Let's bring back this card back in. And see how we can wiggle that. I think that looks really nice on the inside. Closes beautifully. Now let's make the belly band to be able to close this. So I'm, I'm going to use cardstock. You could use DSP. That would, that would give you less bulk as well. But when I was trying to figure this up and have the colors in my head, I kind of liked the evergreen cardstock. So this measures one and a half by 11 inches. And when we do this, 
we don't want it to be too tight. We want to be able to have some give. Um, so we're just going to fold this. I'm, I'm not going to score it. I'm just going to gently fold this, pinch it a little bit and not do it so tight because I want to be able to remove this with ease, but I don't want it to be too loose that it falls off. So I think that's good. Right, so I'm just going to use a little bit of glue here to tack this down and line it up. Okay, now you know we've cut this out. We've cut this tag out with the seasonal dies, and we've made our ribbon slide. Now I'm going to need, I've chosen the gold shimmer ribbon, it's 3 8 inches in width. And I didn't cut it just yet because I want to make sure I have enough and I wasn't sure how much it was going to take. So you can see how I just slide that ribbon through. This is going to go on the front. And I need enough to either tie a bow or tie a knot so we're going to give us enough i'm not sure what i'm going to do so we're going to leave that we're going to set this aside for just a second all right so let's do the pine cones and i'll show you how to do the pine cones so i used this is what they look like when you stamp them and then cut them out. I also added a little bit of Wink of Stella on the darker parts, just to give it a little bit of shimmer and some definition, which I think is gonna look nice. So to, to do that, I used crumb cake for my base, and then I used early espresso ink, and I used soft suede ink to do my stamping. Now for the uh, base of the pine cone here, these bigger sections, I used early espresso and I stamped it. I stamped off on a scrap and then I stamped on my crumb cake. And I'm also, since this is a photopolymer stamp set, I'm using um, a pad underneath just to give me more definition and you get a better stamped image by doing so. So then I'm going to bring in my soft suede ink. I'm not going to stamp off, but I'm going to line this inside. You can see here the inside darker pieces. And it may be hard for me to do this on camera, but you'll be better at it than I am off camera. You line it up like that. And then you take your wonderful dies, you run it through your embossing machine, your die cut machine, and then you get beautiful pine cones that are cut out and very simple and look beautiful. So I just wanted to show you how I stamped that. And then I also stamped Tis the Season from that same Christmas to Remember set. Christmas to Remember set. So we use the inside greeting and then we are going to use an outside greeting. And then again, the seasonal labels die has the matching die that fits perfectly with this sentiment. So I went ahead, stamped it, and then ran that through, cut that out just to save some time on the video. I'm also using the holly leaves, the gold holly leaves that are in the mini catalog. And these are beautiful. I've used those quite a bit. And then I took my hole punch and I think I have a larger hole punch and just used red cardstock to, to do the berries. And then I attached those gold leaves and the berries with glue dots. So very, very simple. So we're going to incorporate that on the belly band of our card. 
We're gonna need some dimensionals. And now we're ready to do the belly band. So you can, I think I want to pop this up with dimensionals, but I wanna make sure, or do I wanna, do I wanna glue that down for less bulk? Mm. Let's see. We can glue it down. So get your ribbon where you want it and then run some, where did my tape runner go? Some seal. along the top and bottom of that ribbon. Just wanna make sure that you ha have a, a banner or something that is, uh, you don't put glue <laughs> so that it goes on the card. You wanna make sure that it stays on the belly band. But my ribbon still slides through. So I didn't get that on there. So you can see it still slides. All right, so we're gonna tie this up. I think I'm gonna do a knot. That looks really pretty. Uh, so now we're going to, you could put a glue dot under here if you wanted to, just to keep that ribbon intact, make sure it doesn't um, come out. I'm just gonna grab a glue dot and just place it underneath of this ribbon and attach it to the belly band. That way I know it's not gonna come untied. Now I'm gonna take some dimensionals and we're going to apply this. Mm, I thought I wanted these on here, but maybe I don't. So let's do this one on the bottom. And then we're going to kind of offset this a little bit. So I want dimensional on the far right side because I want to lean this up against the bigger pine cone. So I'm just going to use some stamp and seal to adhere it so we don't have too many layers going on. I'm just going to angle that a little bit. And then We can use some, I think I have some mini dimensionals here and we'll pop this up. The sentiment on top. These dimensional backings follow you everywhere. Does anyone else have that? <laughs> uh, they're on my cats, they're on everywhere. And I think I'm gonna put that right up there or, yeah, I think I like it right there. And there you have it. That, decided not to use these, but you might choose to use them. I wanted to show them to you because I've gotten a lot of use out of that. That is our card. Our belly band slides off and voila. We have a super cool gift card pop-up. I think your recipient is going to be wowed by this card. They're really easy to make. The hardest part is figuring out what DSP you want to use and how you want to decorate it. That's really the time-consuming part, but as you can see, putting it together is a breeze. So 
let me see some samples that you guys make post it in the comments we would all love to share and see your ideas of what you're making and give us some ideas maybe a birthday card or something you want to share with us whatever thanks for joining us today and i hope you enjoy my presentation and we'll talk to you again soon bye